I have shared my screen. Is it visible to you? Sakshi? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So today we will perform practical number seven. I hope you have already performed, tried to perform uh, up to practical six. Four practicals are the simulation uh, practicals. Which uh, uh, we have covered simultaneously together. Then uh, fifth practical uh, speed control of DC motor, DC shunt motor using armature voltage control method and field control method. That also we have performed. Then sixth practical was for uh, three phase induction motor. Uh, two tests we have carried out. One is a load test. One is no load test, and another is the um, which one it was. Anybody remembering? Yes, no load test, and second was yes, forgotten. Yes, block rotor test, no load test and block rotor test. So in both the cases, in one case, um, we have not applied any load on the motor, and we have tested it. And in second case, we have blocked the rotor, we have stopped the rotor, we have opposed it. Before rotation, and then we have applied the entire voltage and power, and then we have uh, calculated all the parameters of induction motor. Okay, so basically induction motors we have already seen. There are two types of uh, three phase induction motor. One is slip ring or wound rotor type of uh, induction motor, and another is a squirrel cage type of induction motor. So previous practical we have performed on a squirrel cage type of induction motor, and now we'll perform this practical on practical number seven on the slip ring induction motor. So speed control of slip ring induction motor. We'll briefly uh, go through the principle of uh, operation of uh, induction motor so that uh, you can revise it once, and then we'll go to the Actual practical. Okay, so this is the rotor of uh, um, uh, um, uh, slip ring or a wound rotor type of uh, induction motor. It is having three phases. Uh, a shaft is there, which is a rotating one, rotating part of this. So this entire assembly is the rotor assembly. So it is having a star connected uh, rotor winding. So this winding is also rotating. So one part, the uh, it is shorted to each other, and other terminal it is connected to these slip rings. So these slip rings are the speciality of this uh, slip ring induction motor. So three slip rings are there, and to the end of these slip rings, so these slip rings are mounted on shaft, so that these rings are also rotating, and. Uh, while rotating, they are of the circular uh, nature, and on the other end uh, of that particular uh, circle, uh, that is the outside periphery, brushes are kept, and through these brushes, you can uh, connect the external resistance in that particular motor. So initially, these slip rings are away from each other, and You can add here external resistance. You can go on adding. You can go on increasing the value of resistance or reducing the value of resistance, which is connected externally. And whenever the motor will run at its rated speed, then these uh, say 60 to 70 percent of the rated speed, then due to the centrifugal force, these three rings. Will club together. They will come together, and uh, they will short each other. So that means 
this external resistance which we have connected that will be disconnected from the uh, rotor circuit and uh, then the motor will start rotating it will take pick up and then it will run uh, up to its rated speed okay so i hope you have understood uh, the construction of rotor now we'll see uh, the uh, how the motor is so um, uh, as we know uh, every motor is having two parts one is stator or stationary part and another is rotor or rotating part so we have seen the rotating part which is here and the stator of that three phase induction motor is of this nature so it is also it may be a star connected winding or a delta connected winding and uh, the three terminals input terminals they are connected to the three phase supply so through this mcb or miniature circuit breaker which can disconnect uh, which is used to disconnect whenever any short circuit uh, or any fault condition occurs in the uh, circuit okay so that is mcb and this is the stator winding to this stator winding we are connecting three phase ac supply so whenever we are connecting three phase ac supply it uh, um, it um, produces a rotating magnetic field uh, we know that whenever we are connecting uh, to any coil if we, we are connecting dc supply it produces a fixed magnetic field if we are connecting to this particular coil we are connecting single phase ac supply then it produces alternating uh, magnetic field and if we are uh, applying three phase supply across this uh, connection of coil then it produces a rotating magnetic field so how that will go uh, detail in uh, theory class uh, but as there is a difference in the uh, three phases this is phase r this is phase y and this is phase b as you know there is a difference in potential at any instant of time if you will take uh, vertically at any instant of time you will find that these potentials are different so since these potentials are different at any particular time it produces rotating magnetic field so with the help of this vector diagram we'll be able to see that we'll substitute the value of theta equal to 0 30 60 and so on and we'll find that the um, rotating uh, the magnetic field the resultant magnetic field it is of the uh, nature of rotating so it means that uh, it will give you a feeling as if the pair of magnetic uh, magnets is rotating so that's why it is uh, referred as a rotating magnetic field so we'll uh, see its derivation in uh, theory class because uh, this three phase induction motor is in your fifth unit so simply we'll see here the working principle of uh, three phase induction motor so this is the stator winding and inside this it is the rotor winding so this stator winding as we have connected three phase supply to this stator we will assume that it produces a rotating magnetic field uh, why we are assuming that here because in theory we'll see how it produces so by that time we'll assume that it is it produces a rotating magnetic field so rotating magnetic field means this north and south pole on this stator winding this is of circular circular nature so this is south pole and here it is a north pole so magnetic field uh, flux it is flowing from uh, north pole to south pole so we have shown this uh, magnetic field uh, of rotating magnetic field of stator winding now as we know if any conductor stationary conductor is placed between this magnetic field and if that conductor cuts this magnetic field then as per the faraday's law of magnetic induction electromagnetic induction emf will be developed 
on that particular inductor um, conductor so these rotor conductors which are stationary inside this rotor so these conductors they are stationary and this magnetic field is rotating across uh, around this rotor and this rotating magnetic field as it is rotating conductors are stationary these conductors will cut this uh, rotating magnetic field and as this rotating magnetic field is cut by these conductors then do uh, as per the faraday's law of magnetic induction uh, emf will be induced on the rotor conductors now these rotor conductors they are shorted to each other as rotor conductors are shorted to each other and emf is induced on that current will flow in that particular rotor circuit conductor circuit and the direction of that current will be given by the lenz's law so what lenz's law states the direction of current is in such a way that it reduces or it opposes the very cause of it so cause of this is the relative difference between the uh, these two stator and rotor as rotor is stationary initially and stator magnetic field is rotating so there is a relative velocity or relative motion difference between these two and due to this relative difference the direction of current will be decided by the lenz's law and it will try to oppose this very cause of it so as per this if uh, as per our assumption we have assumed here that the direction of stator uh, magnetic field is a uh, clockwise i have shown here the uh, with arrow so as it is clockwise direction uh, as per the lenz's law the current induced in that particular uh, um, conductor of rotor it is moving away uh, or it is coming out of the paper that's why i have shown it uh, here in a cross uh, so if i have shown it a, a dot uh, on this uh, rotor conductor it means current is penetrating into the paper and as i have shown it as a uh, by a cross that means the current is coming out of the paper so as current is coming out of this paper now uh, as per the um, um, if this um, current, now current carrying conductor this is rotor conductor is now current carrying conductor now as current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field uh, or uh, uh, as the uh, conductor is carrying current it also produces its own magnetic field okay and that magnetic field direction of magnetic field it is given by the right hand thumb rule okay and that right hand thumb rule you can see from the uh, right hand thumb rule you can see that uh, the uh, as the direction of current is this the current uh, the magnetic field uh, flux will be produced in the um, uh, the direction of current will be shown by the thumb and the direction of flux will be indicated by the rest of the fingers so uh, the um, uh, flux produced by the induced rotor emf it is shown in this figure c so this rotating magnet uh, this is again one field or flux produced by this conductor uh, rotor conductor now this field will interact with this rotating magnetic field so these two fields will interact with each other in such a way that if uh, uh, you you can see in this figure c uh, the direction of flux on one side of conductor it is in the same direction upward whereas on the other side of this conductor uh, it is opposite in direction so on one side there will be addition of flux whereas on other side of this conductor there will be subtraction of uh, or opposition of the magnetic flux 
so if the fluxes are in the same direction they will be added if they are in the opposite direction they will cancel each other so on this particular conductor you will find that on one side there is addition of fluxes whereas on the other side it is subtraction of fluxes that means it is same as that of the straight rubber band so it will produce mechanical force on this conductor and this rotor will start rotating okay so this is simple principle of working of three phase induction motor now we'll not go in detail we'll go in uh, theory class in detail in that so we'll perform practical on slip ring induction motor as we are adding certain external resistance in the uh, slip ring or wound rotor type of motor they are having high starting torque so as this uh, motor is having high starting torque it can be used in uh, the applications like lift cranes hoist elevators or compressors but this motor are having a drawback as the resistance you are adding the rotor copper loss are very high in this motor so as the rotor copper losses are very high the efficiency of this motor is very low so as the efficiency of this motor is low there uh, means uh, in industries most of the industries 95% of industries are not using this motor 95% of industries they are using the another type of motor that is squirrel case type of induction motor and only 5% of industries wherever we are uh, requiring high starting torque they only uses this type of slip ring or uh, wound rotor type of motors okay but wherever torque requirement is very high like your locomotives means your uh, local trains or uh, railways they are using such type of uh, motor then your lift cranes for uh, all these wherever high starting torque is required they are using this type of motor okay so anyway for uh, performing this practical i have given you the link uh, of iit roorkee so this is uh, the link you have to um, put this link in your uh, um, browser so that you will be able to see the screen and uh, we'll first finish up this theory part Uh, what will be performing in the practical and then will i'll switch over to that particular portion um, of uh, the um, iit website okay so this is the mcb through mcb this three phases they are connected through uh, this auto transformer to uh, the motor uh, as well as this uh, uh, auto transformer means uh, through this uh, a dimmer stat or a rheostat which will be uh, helpful to uh, change the speed so that um, uh, uh, rheostat uh, uh, or you can say auto transformer so this is resistance box then auto transformer the auto transformer connections are uh, made to uh, voltmeter ammeter and wattmeter even and to this uh, particular induction motor so this uh, entire connection diagram and all we'll see it in theory class again so after making these connections you have to uh, vary this um, particular uh, uh, auto transformer uh, or you can uh, keep this auto transformer to a fixed value and you can vary this resistance box so as you are changing this resistance box the reading of voltmeter ammeter and wattmeter will change as well as the speedometer will change so here you can measure the speed so the reading of voltmeter ammeter wattmeter and speedometer you have to take so after noting down you can uh, uh, draw the graph any graph which is required so will re require for the speed control of slip ring induction motor will require a graph of resistance addition of resistance versus speed so that graph will draw ultimately okay so with this we'll move to 
uh, that particular uh, screen i'll change the screen i'll stop sharing this screen and i'll uh, share the screen of uh, iit website so this is that screen yes so is the screen visible to you yes sir okay fine so this is a um, iit uh, roorkee website on which uh, of electrical engineering and uh, the subject is electrical machines simulation experiments so this is the experiment speed control of slip ring induction motor so if you will click on this aim what is the aim you will come to know to perform the speed control test on slip ring induction motor by rotor resistance control method and plot motor speed characteristics okay then if you will click on theory you will be able to find this theory of uh, uh, slip ring type of induction motor which is available here also so you can go through that then you can appear for pre test before performing your practical what knowledge about this motor and about other motors you are having that is tested on this pre test so you can uh, go for this pre test um, mcq type of test then you can click on the procedure you will uh, get the procedure uh, what sort of procedure you have to do that means uh, for connecting making the connections and after making connections what will be there so if um, you have to press on the check button if connections are correct then that alert will be there if connections are wrong that alert will be there and accordingly you have to modify your circuit then check the after checking the connections you have to switch on the mcb then click anywhere on auto transformer set the auto transformer uh, to a particular value and then slide the knob of reverse start to change the resistance and take the readings of voltmeter uh, ammeter wattmeter and the rotor means speed and then add to table for adding it to the table then uh, repeat the procedure to get uh, more than 6 uh, readings and then print button to uh, then uh, draw the graph uh, by clicking on the graph button and then print for uh, storing that particular um, page okay so we'll straight away go on simulation so simulation will result you uh, this uh, simulation page so again you have to uh, click on this particular uh, knob which is click here to go uh, to the simulation page so if you click on that simulation page this particular screen will appear and now you have to uh, make the connections as per the instructions given or the uh, procedure which we have already seen okay so will uh, let us start making the connections i'll make the connections uh, you just observe or if you are uh, um, online you can Uh, directly uh, start performing the practical so as per this procedure i am making the connection pin number 1 uh, this uh, mcb you have to connect it to auto transformer through this uh, connection 1 to 1 uh, 21 to 2 22 then 3.223 so i have made this uh, connection of this now i'll connect this voltmeter so this to 23 again 3 uh, no uh, this is a wrong connection i have made so if you have made a wrong connection then you have to uh, delete or you have to reset uh, the entire uh, thing so i have resetted it and i'll make uh reconnections i'll do reconnections i'll make it fast instead of uh, discussing i'll make it fast you simply observe because 
I am losing my concentration while discussing. Okay, so I'll make the connections. So I have finished connections. Now, as I have finished connections, I will first check whether the connections which I have made, they are correct or not. So I will click on this check button. So alert will be there. The connections are correct. Proceed to take reading. Okay. So I will press OK here. Now, as the connections are there, uh, correct. Then I will start reading the procedure. I will click on this auto transformer. So, uh, first uh, clicking before that, I have to switch on this MCB. So, I will turn on this uh, MCB. As MCB is on, I have connected this supply now. Uh, I have made supply on. Now, you have to increase the uh, value of auto transformer. Now you will be able to observe as auto transformer uh, has supplied the voltage to the entire uh, circuitry, uh, this uh, motor has started rotating and uh, speedometer is showing me 1474 uh, reading, watt meter reading is there, uh, sorry volt meter reading 400 volt, ammeter reading 2.6 ampere watt meter reading it is 40 and this is the resistance value now i'll add this in a table i'll add it to add to table so first reading it has appeared now i'll increase this value of resistance again add it to table i'll again further increase the value of resistance add it to table further i'll increase the value of this resistance so as i am Increasing the value of resistance, you will find that the value of speed or speed is reducing. So speed has started reducing now. I am increasing the value of resistance further. So this, I am changing the value of resistance further. So this. So after uh, taking six or more than that readings, uh, I'll draw the graph. So this is the graph. As the resistance value is reduced, the uh, speed has increased. Okay. So this is the graph. After uh, drawing this graph, you have to print this page. So go click on print this page. You will find that this entire experiment, uh, circuit diagram, observation table and graph is there. So you can save it as a PDF, but you take care that that layout should be the landscape. Then only this uh, entire circuit diagram, observation table and graph will appear. And save it as a PDF and you can send it to the your teacher. So you can send it to me. So I hope we have finished off with this practical. I will show you the link again, once again on the screen.
uh, and uh, I'll stop sharing that screen and I'll again share the PPT screen. Yes. So you can note, make a note of this particular uh, <coughs> link. You can make note of this particular link. And this link, if you will put in your browser, the particular experiment will appear for you. So I hope you have finished up with the practical and you have understood uh, this, understood the same. If not, I'll stop recording first and then uh, you can.